Hey man, welcome back to Man Time. Today's episode, we are going to go through all the things that were going wrong with this saw. If I would have continued to run this saw, uh, it definitely would have, maybe not blown up, but definitely failed uh, in some way, shape, or form. There was two major issues that I found just with that small amount of cutting. Uh, it did make it through the day, but it, it, it's not going to be a reliable tool for me. Let's dig in here. See if we can fix uh, the couple major problems, talk about them, look at them real close. Welcome to Man Time. So I did say in that last episode there, cutting down that huge red oak tree, if you missed that episode, make sure to go back and see that, uh, the two parts, preparation and then actually cutting down the tree. Um, I did say that this saw was going to be able to, to do the job, but it <laughs> it may not have. Um, so there was, there was actually three major issues, well two major ones and then one minor one. First issue was it wasn't getting enough oil. And I went to adjust the oiler and it had actually locked up. Like I put a screwdriver in there and like it had like a sixteenth of a degree, uh, you know, of turning and it wasn't doing anything. I, I couldn't really turn it up or down. And we'll get in here and we'll look at that. Second issue, um, well, one issue was the brake. Um, the brake on this one is just kind of super stiff. Again, it's not going to have the feel of, you know, the OEM saws. Right, everything's cheaper, everything's made cheaper, um, kind of talked about that. But the other major issue was the chain adjuster. Uh, anytime the chain even started to get semi-tight, the chain adjuster just was acting like it was seizing up. So I'm going to take this bar and chain off of here, and then we'll get on in on the bench and look at both of those two major issues really up close. And hopefully I can get the oiler off of there so we can take a good look at that, and the chain adjuster, and we can you know kind of see if we can solve the issues. Um, <clears throat> steel oilers, man, I, I immediately when I, you know, noticed those two things, I went online and looked at, uh, you know, getting an OEM oiler, uh, OEM chain adjuster. Uh, I did find an OEM chain adjuster, OEM oilers, just the body of the oiler, uh, those range from OEM from $50 to $100, some, some are even a little bit more expensive. So I don't know if you go to your steel dealer. You're probably going to be looking, you know, $80 maybe for one of those. Uh, on the other hand, you've got aftermarket, which failed. Uh, and then you've also got, uh, you know, used OEM, which could be a little bit cheaper. I think I saw one of those for about 30 bucks. Then they've got the aftermarket high volume oil pumps, which go for about 30 bucks. So I'd like to be able to fix what I've already got but that chain adjuster may not so I did end up finding one of those and ordering one of those and uh, we'll see if this one isn't fixable if not we'll put that uh, OEM one on here all right let's try to get it fixed up before I get the chain and bar off of here let me just show you what the oil or the uh, chain adjuster is doing you can see there I've loosened it up it does loosen fine um, but as you go to tighten it up um, and again the, the bar nuts are loose you know just tight enough to hold everything kind of together and let's just see if we can tighten it up here well now it appears to have worked itself out <laughs> okay so maybe it just needed a little bit of break in and uh, and kind of fitting together um, but yeah now it looks like it is in fact working um, although in that preparation video for cutting down that tree it was it was not working so it does appear to be working now yeah and initially when I put the bar and chain on here it uh, it wasn't working well you can go back and look at that one so I guess the main issue we'll look at then is the oiler. Uh, let me get the bar and chain off here so I can show you up close what the oiler's doing. Well, on this saw, the oiler uh, adjustment is located right here. Um, and yeah, this is, this is the amount of movement I've got from there to there. And I don't know if that is OEM style or not. 
Uh, but at one point, it wasn't even moving like that much. Right now it is. Um, and typically with steels, you go like all the way to the right is, uh, is maximum. And they have a, like a deal on here that shows that. It isn't on this one, so I'm just assuming. Yeah, I mean, so from here and then over to there is all I've got. All right, so we're turning it all the way up to max oil flow. I'm going to start it up, and we can get a look at what's actually coming out of there. All right, let's see how we're doing on cold start. I like that. Yeah, one other thing I learned on this one, it doesn't have a, a half throttle set. So that might be another indicator, like if you're looking at a, a clone saw versus the real thing. The real thing in this trigger has your, your half throttle lock. Um, that is not present on the clone saws. pumping oil now um, maybe it's just not enough for a 36 inch bar because uh, huh. yeah that, that seemed pretty healthy but like I said uh, when I was actually trying to adjust it it had no adjustment so um, maybe it was locked on low somehow now it's working <sighs> these clone saws man but yeah, if you've got this thing on the job, and it's not pumping out any oil, and I guess only working sporadically, um, that's not really going to work for you. Other things that fail on them, electronics, carburetors, and rubber. So that's fuel line, oil line, impulse line, boots, uh, anything like that. That stuff fails a lot sooner than OEM. So, But I mean, you can see here, like, so... I kind of blew this out, but look at that. It's it's just dry. Like normally you would see oil like built up along with chips all in here. I mean this thing is, is just super dry. And I mean same with same with this. I mean now it's got oil coming out of it obviously. Um but yeah, all this is like dry. But it is working now, so interesting. I guess I will just have to continue to do a little bit more testing with it uh, to see if that's going to hold up in the long run or not, because um, I just don't know. Well, I hadn't really got a chance to get in here and do anything um, to it anyway. Even though it looks like the oiler started working, it looks like the chain adjuster has actually started adjusting. Um, I ran it, you know, up and down through the cycle here where it's, uh, I ran it all the way forward, all the way back. It's a little kind of ratchety in some spots, and I guess that might have been with that 36 inch bar, um, what was causing some issues. And then to get your, you know, sprocket off of here, um, just basically this little E clip and this keeper like that, pull that off. And we can get in here and get our hub off and take a look at what's going on in here. But initially, like what I'm seeing, um, this looks this looks pretty dry. I'm gonna put some grease on this before I put it back together. But yeah, this was this was all getting really really hot without any. Um, without any bar oil coming out, or not enough bar oil, anyway. I think I am just going to kind of let it ride. Um, they seem to be working now. Again, they weren't working real well as I was, uh, as I was cutting there. But, uh, 
You know what, the Husqvarna 3120 was also having a little bit of problems keeping up with the oil. Um, maybe it was the, the red oak, uh, I just can't be for sure. So I'm not going to blame it on, you know, on the oiler right away. Um, but it, it would, definitely was stuck, right? It was, it was not um, adjusting easily at all. I mean, it was, it was basically locked up. And you can see the very small amount of adjustment. Again, I don't know if that's OEM. Um, normal OEM steels haven't done that to me. Uh, but this is my first 066 or 660 type, um, so I don't know for sure. There we go. You can hear that little click uh, as it went in there, and then it kind of tings back and forth. That's how you know you've got your uh, hub on there correctly. And then we'll put this back together. And I would like to say that I'm going to use this, you know, primarily for the rest of the processing of this uh, big red oak tree. But I weighed this thing up. It's 26 and a half pounds with this 36 inch bar. Um, I am not going to lug around. Like if I drop down to the 036, um, I'm saving almost 10 pounds of weight there. So I am not going to lug around 10 extra pounds for that whole tree. Matter of fact, I'm going to be switching it up uh, throughout the entirety of that tree. Let, let's back up and talk about that for a second. Yeah, so I was going to say that, you know, I'm going to use this saw for a lot of the processing of this tree. That's, that's just not true. <laughs> Again, 10 extra pounds going from the 036 to this saw, um, or just there, 9.5, 9, 9.6, something like that. Um, I'm just not going to do it. But I will utilize this and see if those issues continue to persist and if any new issues pop up. But it's going to be basically starting with a handsaw type saw down at the branches. And then as the bigger stuff uh, comes up, you know, some of those were, were more than 24 coming off of the trunk. So I'll probably be stepping my way up uh, from a handsaw to an 036 uh, to a, maybe that Johnstrad 21 2065 turbo. Uh, to maybe up to hammers or uh, the 281 um, but I will definitely get some time more time on this if it's nothing more than just cutting some cookies in them but uh, that, that's going to be the plan for processing that up make sure to subscribe for that uh, different hand saws for the limb portion I'm going to start out at the limbs uh, with some hand saws and then move up into the uh, branches those branches I'm going to cut up into about 20 foot lengths using all those for firewood uh, but I'm planning on putting like my truck and trailer over there, getting a strap laid down in the bottom of the trailer, uh, cutting them up into about 20 foot lengths, and then moving them over, setting them on the trailer. And then once I get it piled up, you know, I can put that strap over it, use the backhoe to then pick up uh, bundles of logs at a time, um, and using the tractor to transport them over to the trailer. So those will be upcoming videos. If you're interested in seeing that, then go ahead and subscribe. And uh, get out there, have you some man time too.